Well, hi there. Not long ago, my son Owen brought this book home from his school library. It was, it was honestly, it was so terrible that we couldn't finish it. But earlier this year, I got three of them to review on this channel. The Ultimate Reptile Rumble was comically ridiculous. But I'll be honest, I have actual PTSD from the Ultimate Ocean Rumble. The idea of doing it again uh, for a long time was unthinkable. And I've heard that the third book that I bought, The Ultimate Dinosaur Rumble, is the worst one of all. I don't feel totally ready. I sincerely have not totally recovered from the last one. But it's Dinosaur December. If not now, when? So uh, let's do this. The sponsor of today's video is Raycon, and I'm actually, I'm really, really excited to talk to you about the Everyday Earbuds. I've been using these now for a few months, and I love them much, much more than I expected to. I've, I've had earbuds before, and I like having earbuds. Earbuds are great, but these are just way better. I actually, I, uh, somebody gave me some big old noise canceling headphones a while back, and I pretty much just stopped using my earbuds entirely until I got these. I use these every day so much. I and, and not only do I use them to listen to podcasts and music, which I do all the time, but I use them for basically all of my phone calls and the quality is excellent. They hold a charge forever and the case is so small and they work so well. I just, I, I always slip them in my pocket. My earbuds have never been part of my EDC before. They are now. I love these things and I thought you should know about them too. Not only do they have these amazing earbuds, but they also have headphones and speakers, not to mention their power tech products like the really red, it's like a rotating USB cord and charger. They offer high quality technology products and best of all, at a really reasonable price. And that's why they've earned tens of thousands of five star reviews with easy free returns. Raycon is honestly a total no brainer. Plus they have a buy now, pay later option. And honestly, like if you're just finding out about Raycon right now, this is the perfect time because these make an amazing gift this holiday season. This is the best gift. Currently Raycon is offering exclusive bundle deals on a selection of their top selling products, such as fitness kits and everyday audio kit and more. Honestly, like if I was giving this as a gift, I'd probably go with the everyday earbuds charge kit. It's got everything you need. This holiday season, get premium audio and power tech at a great price and save even more doing it. Go to buyraycon.com slash Clint to get 15% off site-wide. Remember that's buyraycon.com slash Clint and you can use my link and you'll get 15% off site-wide. Now back to the video. The Ultimate Dinosaur Rumble. 16 dinosaurs showed up for a contest to see who is the roughest and toughest. If a dinosaur loses a fight, it is out of the contest. May the most ferocious dinosaur win. Okay, so it has here, has a pterosaur, says I'm a flying reptile. It has a plesiosaur, says I'm an ocean going reptile. So no pterosaurs allowed, no plesiosaurs allowed. So that's good. That, that's one of the better things I've seen in any of these books. We've actually got uh, two videos now on uh, dinosaurs that aren't really dinosaurs. And these are ones that people very, very frequently think are dinosaurs. So I'm pretty, pretty happy about this though. I, I, I worry that maybe they're just lulling me into a false sense of security. So anyway, okay. So the first match is Kentrosaurus versus Megalosaurus. Kentrosaurus would not be easy to attack uh, or eat. It is spiky, which is very true. Megalosaurus is the first dinosaur to be discovered and named. Its fossilized bones, bones were dug up in England. Kentrosaurus is my favorite stegosaurid. Kentrosaurus is like four to four and a half meters, which is 13 to 15 feet, and about 700 to about 1600 kilos, which is like 1500 to 3500 pounds. Megalosaurus, which is probably one you haven't heard of before, that means big lizard, which, I mean, gosh, I mean, if this is the first dinosaur you find, that's a heck of a lizard. This is maybe like a bit over six meters, so something like 20 feet, and somewhere over 700 kilos, like 1,500 pounds. Uh, some, some estimates put them over nine meters, which would be 30 feet. So uh, this is huge for a Jurassic theropod. And they have strong jaws and huge teeth. 
These are from different parts of the world, but from about the same time. And uh, I don't think for this book they need to be from the same time, but that's pretty cool. And so, so anyway, we're one page in, and uh, so far everything looks fine. I don't really know who I think would win this. Megalosaurus is a formidable predator, but it's plenty capable of killing animals the size of Kentrosaurus, and it would be the aggressor in this fight. But, I mean, you just take a look at Kentrosaurus. It is a well-defended animal. And there are many ways that Megalosaurus could end up dead, or at least end up saying ouch in a battle with Kentrosaurus. If I had to bet, I would bet on Megalosaurus, but honestly, I'm not going to be shocked if Kentrosaurus wins this thing. This is sort of like if an Impala kills a leopard. Not necessarily what you'd predict, but not totally shocking if it happens. All right, all right let's find out what happens here. So Megalosaurus attacks with its toothy jaw, but Kentrosaurus is too spiky, pointy, and bumpy. Megalosaurus puts up a good fight, but it's out of the competition. Kentrosaurus wins. There's no mention here if Megalosaurus is killed or even, even actually severely injured, though it looks in the picture here like one of the tail spikes might have got under its skin and its shoulder, so that would be a bad deal. But, you know, even if not, it's not unreasonable at all for a predator to find a potential prey animal to be more trouble than it's worth. So, you know, so far this, this book is uh, exceeding my expectations. We made it two pages in. Nothing horribly unreasonable. Okay. Uh, it's, it's correctly identified some non-dinosaurs. It hasn't arbitrarily removed all of the best competitors. And, uh, it's already had an, a reasonable outcome for a fight, so <laughs> this is fantastic. Okay, Angulosaurus versus Utah Raptor. These are both Cretaceous and North American. Angulosaurus had a large solid bump on the end of its tail. Its skin was heavily armored. The word saurus means lizard. Angulosaurus means fused lizard. That's true. Utah Raptor stars in the film Jurassic World. I didn't know that, but I mean, those. Dynamicuses in Jurassic World are close to the size of Utah Raptors, so let's go with it. This movie star dinosaur was about 23 feet long, but only 8 feet tall. It's about as tall as two first graders. Utah Raptor means Utah Predator. Uh, okay, so fused lizard, yes, that is what that means. Uh, Utah Predator, no. Uh, this would be like Utah Plunderer or Utah Thief. Um, so somebody clearly didn't watch our video on the Manny Raptora. As far as who would win, um, Ankylosaurus is like six to eight meters long. That's like 20 to 26 feet, maybe even longer than that. Possibly weighed as much as like 8,000 kilos, which is over 17,000 pounds. It was heavily armored and it had that massive bone crushing club at the end of its tail. Utah Raptor, on the other hand, um, I do like that it has feathers here. Uh, it was the largest of the dromaeosaurids, but that that doesn't mean a whole lot. The dromaeosaurids weren't super huge. Um, Utah Raptor was like five to five and a half meters, like 16 to 18 feet long, weighed like 280 to 300 kilos, so like 620, 660 pounds. It was fast. Uh, and it had a, a large hooked claw for pinning prey to the ground. Not really for slashing, like they said in Jurassic Park, but the Deinonychus, but probably more for just pinning prey down. You know, if, if the Utah Raptor doesn't want to fight an Ankylosaurus, like, no fight's going to occur here. And, and Utah Raptor, it really just doesn't even have the tools to take down an armored Ankylosaurus. Ankylosaurus is like 26 times the size of a Utah Raptor. This is like a mink attacking a fully armored knight who has a mace. This is this is Ankylosaurus all day. But I have a bad feeling about this. I got a bad feeling about this. Utah Raptor tries to sneak up on Ankylosaurus and slice its unprotected belly. Now again, that claw is probably not a slashing claw. And, and it certainly... It wouldn't be able to like slash up at the low belly of a, like it, the, the, the Utah Raptor would have to crawl underneath the Ankylosaurus in order to slash up at its belly from below, even if it had a slashing claw, which it probably didn't. Uh, okay, but anyway, whoosh! One swipe from the Ankylosaurus's tail and the Utah Raptor is knocked silly. Ankylosaurus moves on to the next round. Ankylosaurus wins. Mm. Probably knocked considerably more than silly, but but that then uh, I'm being very pleasantly surprised so far. Uh, th 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 that was there were some problems here, but 
oh, oh, by and large, this is so much better than the others. Okay. Yang Chuanosaurus versus Torosaurus. I, I wanted to just call it Yang Chusaurus because one of my good friends from elementary school through high school, her name is Yang Chu. And uh, she's from China, and so is Yang Chuanosaurus, which is pretty bodacious. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Yang Chuanosaurus, this is basically the Allosaurus of China in the Jurassic, which is also the same time as, as Allosaurus, just in North America. Yang Chuanosaurus was discovered in China. When its remains were first discovered, people thought that they were real dragon bones. Some people in other places also once believed this. Yang Chuanosaurus was bipedal. Okay, bipedal means an animal that walks on two legs. Torosaurus. Okay, so Yang Chuanosaurus versus Torosaurus. Torosaurus had the largest skull of any animal that ever lived on land. That's possibly true. Its skull was as big as an elephant. Maybe an ele maybe they mean an elephant's skull, but it's it's bigger than an elephant's skull. But it's not as big as an elephant. Okay, a Taurosaurus means perforated lizard, which is true because the holes, perforated means having holes. Taurosaurus had holes in it, shield like skull. Okay, great. Back of Taurosaurus's skull is called a shrill. Okay, great. Yang Chuanosaurus is a big theropod. It's almost 11 meters long, it's 36 feet, weighs 3,000 kilos, like 6,600 pounds. It's, it's way bigger than Utah Raptor, for example. Uh, but. It is way smaller than Torosaurus. To say, a Torosaurus is like essentially the same size as a Triceratops, uh, but with a longer frill. There was even a, a long period where there was some debate as to whether or not Torosaurus was just an adult Triceratops and that the frill grew longer when they reached adulthood. Now it doesn't look like that's the case. It, it is a separate dinosaur, but it's big. It's big like Triceratops. Uh, it's conservatively like seven and a half meters long, about 25 feet, and weighed more than 9,000 kilos, which is like 20,000 pounds. This was a late Cretaceous tank that even T-Rex would probably leave alone as an adult. I do not think Yang Chuanosaurus would engage with one, but if it does, my money's definitely on Torosaurus. So. See what happens. After dodging Torosaurus' sharp horns, Yang Chuanosaurus bites its legs and slows down Torosaurus. The limping Torosaurus is done for. In this fight, the meat eater defeats the plant eater, the biped beats the quadruped, Yang Chuanosaurus wins. Well, that's. that's dumb. That was a dumb result. Uh, Torosaurus uh, forgot to turn around, apparently. I think that, and also, looks like Yang Chuanosaurus was highly venomous, because one bite to its rump and Torosaurus is done for, apparently. Just didn't, didn't spin around and just gore the heck out of Yang Chuanosaurus. It was just done for, just dead. It just, oh, I didn't turn, oh, oh dead. To be perfectly honest, this is the kind of result I come here for. I mean, it's no, it's no man of war versus leatherback sea turtle, but things are finally starting to come together in this book. This, this is what I expect. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh geez. okay, so oh jeez. Uh Supersaurus versus Micropachycephalosaurus. <laughs> A 35 meter, 115 foot, 40,000 kilo, 88,000 pound sauropod versus a 1 meter ceratopsian with no horns. <laughs> this is like an elephant versus a mouse, which actually has me a little bit concerned. Uh very bad feeling about this. Supersaurus might not even know a fight is occurring. Ow! Did I step on a Lego? Oh crap, it's another Micropachycephalosaurus. All right, okay, not fair. Who matched these two together? Supersaurus is fighting Micropachycephalosaurus. Supersaurus was a giant plant-eating sauropod. Micropachycephalosaurus is one of the longest names of any dinosaur. I think it might be the longest. It's a long name, but it was a tiny dinosaur. It was only as big as a goose. Its name means small, thick-headed lizard. Okay, so let's see. Supersaurus steps on Micropachycephalosaurus. Uh-oh, squished. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. Supersaurus wins. Uh, yes, correct. Okay. Giganotosaurus versus Stegosaurus. The biggest carnivore the world has ever seen. On land. Except for T-Rex. And probably Spinosaurus. Okay. Giganotosaurus had a huge jaw full of sharp teeth. Its jaw was six feet long. Giganotosaurus was considered the largest meat-eating dinosaur by Dr. Grant. You would not want to fight it. It walked and hunted on two legs. Giganotosaurus means giant lizard of the south. Two-legged dinosaurs are called theropods. 
Theropod means beast foot. Theropods walked like birds. Okay, so um, theropods are generally two-legged, but not all two-legged dinosaurs are theropods. Uh, for example, the, all the duck-billed dinosaurs, uh, Iguanodon, a lot of the early ceratopsians. In fact, ancestral dinosaurs were bipedal. So long before there were theropods, all of the dinosaurs were bipedal. So it's not, it's not accurate at all to say that all bipedal dinosaurs are theropods, but most theropods are bipedal. So anyway, okay. Uh, Stegosaurus, this dinosaur is easy to recognize. It had plates on its back and a spiked tail. Stegosaurus means roof lizard. Okay, so Giganotosaurus, like, 12 to 13 meters, 39 to 43 feet. It's like 8,200 kilos, like 18,000 pounds. Stegosaurus is like seven meters, 23 feet, like 3,800 kilos, like 8,400 pounds. While I would say it's not impossible for Stegosaurus to win, Giganotosaurus is much more formidable than anything Stegosaurus would have encountered in the Jurassic. It's no T-Rex, but Giganotosaurus should win this one. So let's see, okay. It's no fun fighting Stegosaurus's plates and spiked tail, but Giganotosaurus's powerful jaws overpowers the slow Stegosaurus. After a vicious fight, Giganotosaurus wins. Uh, okay, they, they, I'm happy with this result. Giganotosaurus had relatively strong jaws, but the jaws of T-Rex were way, way stronger, just for the record. So like when you're talking about a big theropod with strong jaws, it's gonna be the, the Tyrannosaurids, not the Carcharodontosaurids, like, like Giganotosaurus. Okay, Tyrannotitan versus Tyrannosaurus Rex. So, well, we're talking about the difference in strength here. Um, they have similar names, these two, Tyrannotitan and Tyrannosaurus Rex, but they're not similar theropods. Tyrannotitan was a Carcharodontosaurid like Giganotosaurus, which is why it wasn't part of our phylogeny on the Tyrannosaurids. It was a bit over 12 to 13 meters, which is like 40 to 43 feet long, and weighed roughly five to 7,000 kilos, which is like 11 to 15,000 pounds. Like all Carcharodontosaurids, it had much weaker jaws than did the Tyrannosaurids, but it did have very sharp shearing teeth. This guy would win a lot of fights, but not this one. I wouldn't pick any theropod to win a head-to-head -head fight with a T-Rex. Uh, growing to over 12 meters, 41 feet long, and weighing at least 10,000 kilos, 22,000 pounds, Tyrannosaurus Rex was twice the size of Tyrannotitan and had much, much greater bite force, even than that of Giganotosaurus, a more comparably sized Carcharodontosaurid than is Tyrannotitan. The jaw strength of Tyrannosaurus rex would shatter the teeth of a Carcharodontosaurid. This isn't as lopsided as the Supersaurus battle, but, but it's not gonna be close. Okay, so Tyrannotitan lived about 100 million years ago. In real life, it would never have met a Tyrannosaurus rex or T-Rex, which lived at a later time. Because Tyrannotitan lived in an earlier age, its brain was probably not as developed as T-Rex's. Tyrannotitan means giant tyrant. Uh, Tyrannotitan versus Tyrannosaurus rex, just call me T-Rex. Everyone knows this creature. It's one of the most famous dinosaurs. T-Rex is smarter. It runs at Tyrannotitan and bites off an arm. Well, that is a rough start to the fight. Tyrannotitan is shocked. As it decides what to do next, T-Rex charges full speed and bites a chunk out of its neck. The fight is over. T-Rex wins. Good enough. Good enough. Uh, thank you. Uh, it probably would be more that it crushed its neck than bites a chunk out of it, but let's do it. And this is it. Okay, it's gonna take a heck of a lot of mana wars to take down a T-Rex, I'll tell you that right now. Okay, Styracosaurus versus Spinosaurus. For the record, just looking at this, uh, Spinosaurus probably didn't look much like this at all. We'll have a whole video about Spinosaurus a little later this month, you know, in case you're looking for a reason to click that little bell. Okay, so horns, horns everywhere. It would hurt to bite this dinosaur's face. Styracosaurus was an herbivore. Its teeth were perfect for slicing and munching plants. True. Behold Spinosaurus. It may have been the perfect fighting dinosaur, if it's fighting fish. It was fast, strong, light, long. It had huge teeth on its jaw and could swim. Many dinosaur fans are rooting for Spinosaurus to win the championship. Spinosaurus could hunt on land and in the water. Go Spinosaurus, go. So who would win? Um, Styracosaurus is like, uh, well, it, let's start with the horn. It's like 60 centimeters long. It's like a two foot long horn on its nose. 
Uh, it's it's like five to five and a half meters long. It's 16 to 18 feet. It weighs 1,800 to 2,700 kilos, which is like four to 6,000 pounds. Spinosaurus, on the other hand, is 14 meters long. That's like 46 feet. It weighs 7,400 kilos. That's like 16,500 pounds. And it's got these big old fish eating jaws. I would definitely pick T-Rex to beat Spinosaurus. Even Giganotosaurus, I think, would beat Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus is just, I mean, it's built for eating fairly good sized fish. And, you know, it's like a gharial. But, you know, if I, I would pick a gharial to lose against a lot of crocodiles, and that's what T-Rex is. It's, a, you know, the big old crocodile. And uh, Giganotosaurus, you know, they're just, they're just gonna be better at attacking large non-fish prey. I, I would pick also to be the Spinosaurus, I'd pick uh, Supersaurus, I'd pick Taurosaurus. Uh, there's really a whole lot of competitors in this tournament that I would pick to beat a Spinosaurus. Uh, and while Styracosaurus will be difficult for those fish-eating jaws to deal with, and uh, while it has all the tools, or at least uh, the tool required to kill a Spinosaurus, I think that just given the size of Styracosaurus, that Spinosaurus should win. But only if it's really determined, because even at this size, being as well defended and uh, this different from the typical prey of Spinosaurus, it might not be worth the effort. So let's just, let's see what happens. Spinosaurus goes head to head with Styracosaurus. Ouch! Okay, so. Spinosaurus was the first to say, ouch. Too many sharp horns, they hurt. Styracosaurus is too slow. I don't know what that had to do with the horns. Okay. Shifty Spinosaurus sneaks around to the back of Styracosaurus. Spinosaurus bites Styracosaurus on the rear end. <laughs> Styracosaurus is bleeding. The fight is over. No surprise here. Speed beats horns. Sometimes I forget that uh, Ceratopsians don't know how to turn around, so. Spinosaurus wins! I do wonder, I wonder if the spine, does it say? If the Spinosaurus was bleeding when it discovered that those horns are sharp and hurt. Apparently it figured that out the easy way. Speed beats horns! Unless uh, you run full speed into the horn, but again, it's, uh, it's, I guess it's just valuable to know that Ceratopsians they can't turn around. Three up, three down. No Ceratopsians survived this round. Okay, so I think this should be the last battle of round one. Uh, we got Allosaurus, which is the Utah State fossil, versus Apatosaurus. Uh, oh, and you gotta see this, so let's see here. Did you guys see this? This is a hand-sculpted and hand-painted Allosaurus model that was sculpted by Art by Ants and then sent to us. It's actually the second, the second amazing, one of a kind, incredible sculpture that that they have sent to us. And I just like I, I love these. These are just the detail and the eyes. They're so beautiful and so cool. Anyway, I just I had to show those off because. I'm, I think they should stay out here the rest of the video. What do you guys think? So we'll have one there. I have to be so careful with them because they are fragile and they're absolutely one of a kind, made by hand. Oh, how cool are they? Okay, look. Uh, hopefully I don't get angry and lash out. I will keep myself under control. But okay, anyway, so I, I will read on. Okay, Allosaurus versus Apatosaurus. Many Allosaurus fossils have been discovered around the world. One dig site alone in Utah produced 60 different Allosaurus specimens. This dinosaur ate meat and walked on two legs. Its vertebrae bones were shaped differently than other dinosaurs. We may never know if it hunted in packs or alone. Apatosaurus was a long sauropod type dinosaur. Sauropod type? I don't know what that means. It's a, it's a sauropod. Apatosaurus was a long sauropod dinosaur with a tail like a bullwhip. When this huge creature walked, it must have sounded like thunder. Uh, so this is a hard one. Who would win? Okay, so Allosaurus, my buddy here, Allosaurus, uh, at least 8.5 meters long. It's like 28 feet long. Some 
we're larger than that. That's sort of like the average size. Uh, they're like 1,700 kilos, which is like 3,800 pounds. These were real giants of the Jurassic. I mean, you know, like this was an, the apex predator uh, in, in this part of North America during the Jurassic. And uh, of course, you've got Yang Chuanosaurus over in, in China at the same time. Apatosaurus, you know, there's the possibility that Apatosaurus actually was prey for Allosaurus, but probably only when they were small. Uh, as adults, they're like 21 to 23 meters. It's like 69 to 75 feet, maybe bigger than that. 16 to 22,000 kilos. It's like 36 to 50,000 pounds. This is like a lion attacking an elephant. Uh, my money's on the elephant, at least as an adult. So we're gonna go Apatosaurus. Allosaurus runs, opens its mouth, and jumps on Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus is huge, between 75 and 85 feet long. So this is definitely one of the biggest. Apatosaurus can defend itself well. It waits for Allosaurus to make another charge. It turns its body. Oh, did you hear that? Sauropods can turn their bodies. Big advantage over the Ceratopsians. Okay. Uh, it turns its body, sets its forelegs, and whips its tail. Whack! Oh, you're in trouble, Allosaurus. <laughs> you didn't know what you were up against. Okay. The tail hits Allosaurus across the neck and knocks the wind out of it. Another tail shot. Whoosh! Whack! That tail is huge. Allosaurus' neck is broken. Apatosaurus wins. All right. All right, so I think that's the end of round one. Uh, we have learned that Ceratopsians can't turn around. That Yangchuanosaurus might be venomous. But otherwise, these fights seem to be going how they should. Uh, I really think this is just a question of T-Rex versus Supersaurus. And given what we know about the turning abilities of sauropods and sauropod-like animals, I think Supersaurus is my pick for the winner of this thing. Um, and so far, I'm not experiencing any major psychological trauma. So I'm pretty happy, at least so far. Round two. Kentrosaurus versus Ankylosaurus. Uh, well, this is Ankylosaurus all day. It's bigger, uh, better armored, uh, has a more devastating weapon, and Ankylosaurids probably drove their cousins, the Stegosaurids, to extinction. Uh, I really don't think this is going to be any different, but uh, let's see. Okay. On the second round, only eight dinosaurs had left. Kentrosaurus was armored with sharp weapons. It looked like it could inflict pain and atta if attacked. Kentrosaurus did not look cute and huggable at all. Ankylosaurus was defensively armored and plated for protection. Its body was low to the ground and difficult to attack, especially from below, Utah Raptor. Uh, it looked like a tank, and it had horns covering its neck. Okay, so both of these dinosaurs were herbivores. Uh, these two don't eat each other. It's good. So why would they fight? They might battle over territory. Plants to eat or water to drink. The smaller Kentrosaurus hits Ankylosaurus with its tail. Its tail bounces off of Ankylosaurus's armor. Ankylosaurus gets close, swings its hammer-like tail, and breaks Kentrosaurus's leg bones. Whack! Whack! Kentrosaurus falls over. Ankylosaurus wins. Well, um, you know, I think that seems exactly like what would happen if these two really fought in earnest. So, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Giganotosaurus versus Tyrannosaurus Rex. I already made my prediction here. Uh, T-Rex is nominally bigger. And while I think that Giganotosaurus had the tools to kill a T-Rex, uh, like a leopard can kill a lion, the immense bite force of T-Rex just makes its weapon far more devastating than that of Giganotosaurus. You know, T-Rex is a brawler. So, okay. Uh, this is a fight that fans have been waiting for. Giganotosaurus was bigger than T-Rex. Uh, Probably not. Um, they both had a similar body design. Giganotosaurus had a huge jaw and strong legs. Giganotosaurus had three fingers on each short arm. T-Rex had an advantage. That's true. Its jaw was much more powerful. Fact. Maybe T-Rex was like an orca. Also called a killer whale. A perfect hunting machine. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, jeez. They just compared T-Rex to an orca. Uh... I, now I just hope that dozens of Giganotosauruses don't show up and then get sucked into T-Rex's nose. Okay. If you know, you know. Okay. <clears throat> Giganotosaurus walks over to T-Rex. It's not used to fighting an equal. 
T-Rex pretends to bite, but swings its body and whips Giganotosaurus with its heavy tail. T-Rex attacks and gives Giganotosaurus something it didn't expect, a hip check. While Giganotosaurus is off balance, the T-Rex bites Giganotosaurus' neck. T-Rex doesn't let go. Tyrannosaurus Rex wins. Well, that was a ridiculous fight, but I totally agree with the result. That is how that would end. Not for sure, but nine times out of 10. Okay. Yang Chuanosaurus versus Supersaurus. Again, I already made my prediction that uh, Supersaurus would win over T-Rex. It definitely beats a much smaller, though uh, potentially venomous, theropod given its size and turning ability. So here we go. Okay. Once again, we have a meat eater against a plant eater. We also could describe this fight as carnivore versus herbivore. Enormous mouth versus small mouth, two legs versus four legs, hunter versus forager. Supersaurus was one of the largest animals that ever walked the land. It weighed up to 40 tons. Its tail was up to 40 feet long. Its neck was longer than its tail. As Yang Chuanosaurus leaps and tries to bite chunks out of its foe, Supersaurus just trots towards Yang Chuanosaurus and gets ready to step on it. 40 tons is a lot of weight. Supersaurus's body is high in the air, hard for Yang Chuanosaurus to reach. Supersaurus bumps the smaller dinosaur with its long neck, and then rises up on its hind legs, probably couldn't do that, and crushes Yang Chuanosaurus with its feet. Yang Chuanosaurus has broken ribs and a broken leg. Goodbye, Yang Chuanosaurus. Supersaurus wins. All right, well, so yeah, they probably couldn't do that rear up and crush things like the Brachiosaurus does in Jurassic Park, especially Supersaurus, like it's, it's built less that way even than the Brachiosaurus, but very unlikely that it could do that. But uh, either way, I think this is the right end result. So in, ends justify the means, right? Apatosaurus versus Spinosaurus. All right, it's th that, this is a tougher one. This is a tougher one. I'm really not sure anything was hunting adult giant sauropods, especially if it had jaws like Spinosaurus. And I don't know why Spinosaurus's tongue is hanging out the side here. Also, given the actual stance of Spinosaurus, which is uh, probably more like this, uh, Spinosaurus probably couldn't reach anything too vital on Apatosaurus. Uh, so I'm gonna go with Apatosaurus on this one. Okay, so Apatosaurus was a huge dinosaur. It ate up to 800 pounds of vegetation per day. It was up to 75 feet long. Scientists say it kept on growing and growing. Spinosaurus can send shivers down your spine, hence the name. It is fast, long, and has strong jaws with scary teeth. It's bigger than a T-Rex, longer, longer. Uh, but it must first defeat a Patasaurus. Spinosaurus walks near Apatosaurus, but stays out of range of its swinging head and whip-like tail. When Apatosaurus turns its head, Spinosaurus jumps up and rips a chunk out of the shoulder. Apatosaurus' shoulder starts bleeding. Spinosaurus runs to the other side and bites again. Spinosaurus wins. Given the nature of the bite, uh, Spinosaurus must be venomous also. <laughs> so, okay, well that was the end of round two. So. Here we are, the Spinosaurus, also venomous. It's getting a little bit dumber, but uh, I am still maintaining my sanity. Uh, legitimately, by this point in the last book, I had to lie down on the ground for a long time. So I, I just, I had no strength left. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, like pretty happy with this book. Uh, Ankylosaurus versus Tyrannosaurus Rex. So, okay, well, this is my favorite Sauriscian dinosaur versus my favorite Ornithischian dinosaur. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, when I said that this whole battle from this point on was between T-Rex and Supersaurus, I kind of forgot that Ankylosaurus was still in this competition. I do think that Supersaurus would beat an Ankylosaur. I mean, like what's an Ankylosaur going to do to a Supersaurus? Like stub its toe? Ankylosaurs are also at such a great stomping on height. You know, if you're a Supersaurus, you just stomp right on one. But I do think it has a real chance against a T-Rex. Uh, T-Rex... It certainly has the tools to win this fight, especially if Ankylosaurus, like, you know, like say, hypothetically, say it can't turn around. But I doubt that T-Rex would really want to mess with an adult Ankylosaur. So I'm going to go with T-Rex, but say, say hypothetically, the Ankylosaur lodges itself between two rocks and knocks one onto the skull of the T-Rex. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Okay, so... This rugged plant eater can smell the T-Rex. 
and knows the T-Rex is a troublemaker. It's got that, that troublemaker aroma. When it was younger, T-Rex got whacked by an ankylosaurus tail. Hasn't forgotten the painful bump. He got on, man, this is, this is like not facts anymore. This is just like little, little backstory on the, the experiences that these individual dinosaurs have had. Okay, so, so this one, he remembers that it got a bump on its head from an ankylosaur when it was a, a wee lad. And uh, now it's gonna be, gonna apply that knowledge somehow. So, okay. T-Rex runs full speed with its head down. Smash! T-Rex knows the ankylosaur's armor. It's too thick to bite. T-Rex needs to flip it over so it can bite its softer belly. Ankylosaurus is now helpless on its back. So T-Rex, it just, it just needed to need to flip it over and suddenly Ankylosaurus is uh, on its back. Uh, like, yes, like T-Rex either has a genie or telekinesis. Uh, I mean, who, who, who needs venom when you have something like that? T-Rex takes a giant bite and moves on to the championship. T-Rex wins. Okay, so, oh hell. So T-Rex wins. Well, I, I agree with that result. And uh, kind of wonder if T-Rex just needed Nedry to turn off the fences. Maybe she just needed to appear inside of the visitor center. I mean, uh, how did nobody notice her pop in there? Perhaps they couldn't see her if she didn't move, or perhaps she needed for them not to see her. This need power of the Tyrannosaurus is, this is a game changer. Supersaurus versus Spinosaurus. Supersaurus. No, that Spinosaur venom, that has me nervous. So, all right. It sounds like thunder as Supersaurus approaches Spinosaurus. Boom, boom, boom go its feet. Spinosaurus is fast. It runs at Supersaurus and attacks it between its front and back legs. Wow. So this battle has begun and I haven't even turned the page yet. But Supersaurus can turn, so just because you think you're heading between it, you better watch out, Spinosaurus. Okay, Spinosaurus has plenty of energy. It bites and backs off, then bites and backs off again. Spinosaurus avoids Supersaurus's huge tail and long neck. It takes time, but Supersaurus loses too much blood and eventually collapses. I don't think it has anything to do with losing blood. That was Venom, sucker. Bites it, backs off, bites it, backs off, just waits for it to die. Venom. Okay, so Spinosaurus wins. And that gets us to the championship. T-Rex versus Spinosaurus. Need versus Venom. Obviously, in the real world, the taller, heavier T-Rex with its significantly more powerful jaws would win. It, it needs to win. But this Spinosaurus is, it's taller than the real thing. And it has some powerful venom. Venom powerful enough to quickly drop an adult Supersaurus. But given that Supersaurus is out, at this point my money is definitely on the Tyrant Lizard King. She just needs to win. The long necks are gone. The armored dinosaurs, gone. The plant eaters. Gone. The spiked dinosaurs, gone. The plated dinosaurs, gone. This is the fight that readers and dinosaurs have been waiting for. Jaw versus jaw. T-Rex has a stronger and wider jaw. Spinosaurus is longer, but thinner. Spinosaurus also has a longer jaw. Both dinosaurs have a mouthful of sharp teeth. T-Rex charges, but quicker Spinosaurus jumps out of the way. Ooh. So, Spinosaurus, these battles of Spinosaurus, they pretty much always start on this page. Okay, so let's, let's uh, head to the next page. Okay, so, Spinosaurus runs head first and bites T-Rex's jaw. Spinosaurus' biting muscles are way stronger than the muscles T-Rex uses to open its mouth. Spinosaurus bites harder and deeper. Now T-Rex can't bite back. Spinosaurus holds on. It uses its longer arms to scratch T-Rex. T-Rex loses, Spinosaurus wins. Okay, so Spinosaurus holds T-Rex's mouth closed and scratches T-Rex 
while its venom goes to work. Of course, Spinosaurus wins. This is one way the competition might have ended. Write your own ending or think of a new version of an Ultimate Rumble book. Oh, well, I really thought T-Rex needed to win, but it didn't seem to use its need power at all. Uh, this really, this, this book, it really took its time before showing its true colors, but it did find a way not to disappoint. <laughs> these, these book, they're just the worst. Uh, they're so bad. But, um, it's all of them. But I have some terrible news. At least for me. This was supposed to be the last of these books that I had to read. But some friends of mine, or people that I thought were my friends, well, they gave me this. So apparently, this nightmare is not yet over. Uh, so now might be a good time to subscribe if you want to see this one. Um, and here's a playlist of these horrible books if you want to see the other two. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Oh, and if you want to see a bonus video, like the video that all of these cool people get to see, uh, all about, well, how I feel about these books and some discussion that we had about these cool dinosaurs. And, I mean, we have an extra video every week. Uh, please consider checking out our Patreon. It's, it's pretty rad, and it makes us make cool content like this.